All right, good evening. Welcome back. All right, so this is our global news update. I was going to do it on Thursday, but got a little busy. So what we're going to talk about this evening, we're going to talk about navigating the tensions between Israel, eternal strife, and the situation that's shaping in the Baltics. We're going to see videos, especially from what's going on in Israel, a few videos that I have. We're also going to talk about the situation in the Baltics and how we are quickly getting closer to World War III. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's get the screen shared over and let's get right to these articles. Let's get right to my breakdown. Very, very quick breakdown. Right. All right, so our first article that's up. Let's show to see it. So it says, but the door of the madhouse opens. NATO will strike through Ukraine strategic targets deep in Russia. So what's, what's happening? All right, so they've given Ukraine permission to strike deep into Russia. So it's not looking good, right? So the conflict in Ukraine, we can see, is escalating. With NATO countries increasingly supporting Ukraine's military actions within the, within the Russian territory. The Netherlands, alongside the USA, Britain, and Germany, all have given its approval for Ukraine to use F-16 fighter jets for strikes deep into Russia. Even Dutch, even the Dutch foreign minister, Wolf Oakstra, justified this by stating that self-defense has no limits. Even the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, which we'll see a video here in a second, confirmed that the Biden administration has authorized Ukraine to use American weapons on Russian soil, particularly in response to attacks in Kar on Kharkiv. Germany and Britain have also endorsed U U Ukraine's right to use Western weapons for defensive strikes against Russian positions. Ukraine has welcomed this support, which, which significantly boosts its def defensive capabilities. So as we scroll down here, right, here's a video from Blinken. It's about a two-minute video. All right, so let's watch it. With regard to uh, the use of U.S. arms by Ukraine and Russia, uh, I said this the other day. The hallmark of our engagement, our support for Ukraine over these more than two years, has been to adapt and adjust as necessary to meet what's actually going on on the battlefield, to make sure that Ukraine has what it needs, uh, when it needs it, uh, to do that uh, deliberately and, and effectively. And that's exactly what we're doing in response to what we've now seen in, uh, in and around the Kharkiv region. Um, over the past few weeks, Ukraine came to us and asked for the authorization uh, to uh, use weapons that we're providing to defend against this aggression, including against Russian forces that are massing on the Russian side of the border and then attacking into Ukraine. Uh, and uh, that went right to the president. And as you've heard, he's approved the use of our weapons for that, uh, for that purpose. Um, going forward, we'll continue to do what we've been doing, which is as necessary uh, adapt uh, and adjust. And that, as I said, has been a hallmark of our engagement. Uh, it will uh, continue to be. Uh, as I've also said uh, many, many times, we want to make sure that we're proceeding um, deliberately uh, as well as effectively. So I think time and again, we've um, adapted, we've adjusted, we've provided Ukraine with the systems, the weapons that it's needed. But again, as I've shared with you many times before, for example, when it comes to weapon systems, we also want to make sure that they have the necessary training to use the weapons and they have the necessary capacity to maintain them. So you have to look at this in a, in a comprehensive way. And uh, I think if you look back, as well as look at what we're doing now, uh, it reflects a very deliberate determination to make sure that we're getting Ukraine what they need when they need it. All right, our next article up. So the die has been cast. The Russians have issued a nuclear map in Europe. They are targeting all in, all NATO bases on the on European soil. European soil. So Russia has released what a nuclear map. There we go. So here's the nuclear map. All right. You can see. Try to zoom out some. So here's some of that map. So Russia has released a nuclear map of Europe highlighting NATO bases, considers 
potential targets. This move comes amid heightened tensions following attacks on Russian strategic early warning radars. We've talked about that. Moscow claims NATO threatens Russia's survival, is now considering nuclear deterrence measures, including the permanent deployment of nuclear weapons amid aimed at NATO bases across Europe. Russian Foreign Minister Sergio Laura warned that the supply of S-16 jets to Ukraine, which could carry nuclear warheads, is seen as a proactive act by NATO. Russia has cautioned against the deployment of short and medium-range nuclear weapons in new locations, particularly in Europe and Asia, threatening countermeasures if all this occurs. Here we go. Our next article. So, we see where I'm going with this. Poland, France, Britain, and Germany gave Ukraine permission to hit targets deep inside Russia with NATO weapons, right? So Poland, France, Britain, and Germany have lifted all restrictions on Ukraine's use of NATO weapons, allowing deep strikes into Russian territory. This decision significantly escalated the conflict as NATO countries across another Russian red line. French President Macron provides Ukraine's right to neutralize Russian military bases, launching attacks against it while also cautioning against targeting civilian installations. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz supported Ukraine's right to self-defense under international law. Poland has no restrictions on using Poland has no restrictions on using its donated weapons, including fire jets and tanks. Britain has also allowed the use of its storm shadow missiles for attacks on Russian soil. NATO Secretary General Jen Stolzenberg and EU Foreign Policy Chief Joseph Borrell have urged Western capitals to support Ukraine's defenses, defensive actions despite fears of escalation. So here's a few videos of Mark Rohn. <clears throat> Hold on a second. It doesn't want to play. Let me go back out. I do apologize for this. Let's see if we can get it to play now. On pense que on doit leur permettre de neutraliser les sites militaires d'où sont tirés les missiles et au fond les sites militaires depuis lesquels l'Ukraine est agressée. Mais on ne doit pas permettre de toucher d'autres cibles en Russie, et évidemment des capacités civiles ou d'autres cibles militaires. A, a real question should we be allowed to use whatever weapons we can yeah. to strike the enemy inside their territory but having said that I would like to stress that Ukraine is a very honest and trusted partner mm -hmm. when we say that we honor our commitments this is exactly what we do we have not failed our partners not even once Understood. so until there is consensus we will do as so we you agree. would not use European provided weapons even if Emmanuel Macron said he was okay with that to take the fight to Russia
Look, we have uh, already a precedent. So, for example, yeah. uh, the United <coughs> Kingdom, uh -huh. uh, they have already previously allowed Ukraine to use their provided long-range missiles, yes. the Storm Shadows, and we have been successfully using so them. you can do both in this case. Well, we'll have to be, you know, flexible and sure. dynamic. Plus... All right, so... Our next one here. It's going to talk about the U.S. changes doctrine, flirting with the idea of a limited nuclear conflict with Russia and China. They are loading the Virginia class submarines with nuclear missiles. So the United States is complicating a shift in its nuclear strategy by considering the deployment of nuclear armed cruise missiles, SLCMN, on Virginia class submarines. This move aims to enhance deterrence against Russia and China by introducing the possibility of limited nuclear conflict. U.S. lawmakers and military officials believe that the SLCMNs will provide a credible deterrent while signaling an interest in lim and limiting the intensity of nuclear exchanges. Critics, including Russia and China, argue that such actions increase the risk of a broader nuclear war rather than deterring it. The U.S. has scrapped the SLCMN program in, 20, in 2022, but revived it in response to geopolitical tensions with plans to achieve operational capability by 2034. Okay, That's what this article is going to talk about. So I kind of broke it down. All right. Let's talk about this. And then we'll get into our videos to talk about what's going on in Israel. So the U.S. is danger, dangerously mil militarizing the Baltic. What is happening to the island of Gotland? What is the story surrounding the Swedish island of Gotland? So the U.S. is increasing its military presence in the Baltic region, focusing on the Swedish island of Gotland. Russia has warned that Swedish military officials are provoking anti-Russian sentiment by suggesting that Russia aims to control Gotland, a key location in the Baltic Sea. Historically, Russia occupied Gotland during the Russia-Swedish War of 1808. But there had been no conflict between the nations. Despite joining NATO, Sweden faced warnings from Russia about turning Gotland into a NATO stronghold. NATO was planning military exercises on Gotland, increasing its regional installations and presence. Meanwhile, Russia maintains a, a significant military presence in the Baltic, including the Baltic fleet based in Kaliningrad and Leningrad regions. So, Gotland, what, what we said was a Swedish island, it's in the Baltic Sea, right? Is of a significant historical and strategic uh, importance. Historically, Gotland has been a focal point in regional conflicts, notably during the Russia-Swedish War of 1808, when Russian forces temporarily occupied the island. This occupation has imprinted on Swedish collective memory and contributes to contemporary security concerns. In modern times, Gotland's strategic location makes it a key asset for controlling the Baltic Sea, so it's a key asset. Its proximity to Stockholm and the Russian enclave of Kilingr in Kilingrad places it at the heart of Baltic security dynamics. A result, as a result, Gotland has become central to NATO's defense strategy in the region, especially in the light of Sweden's recent NATO membership. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so let's move on. So this is what I really wanted to get to. I'm going to show some videos. We're going to talk about what's going on in Israel. And then we're going to get out of here. I've got some other videos to show. So this one talks about threats of military coup in Israel, urgent order of an extensive investigation into Israel. So there's a video. So let's talk about this real quick and then let's watch some of these videos. So in Israel, a video has surfaced showing an IDF soldier threatening a military coup amidst ongoing protests against Prime Minister Netanyahu in Tel Aviv. The video shared on Telegram and highlighted by Netanyahu's son, Er, depicts a mass soldier calling for action against Defense Minister Yova Glant and Chief of the Army General Staff 
her 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 how how the if I said that right sorry the soldier's message underscores dissatisfaction with current leadership and warns of potential rebellion. In response, Israel authorities have initiated an investigation into the incident, with the chief of staff ordering immediate discussions at all management levels due to the gravity of the situation. So here is the video. Right. ראש הממשלה בנימין נתניהו, הסרטון הזה מיועד לך. אנחנו חיילי המילואים לא מתכוונים למסור את המפתחות לאף רשות פלסטינית. So I, I turned off, there's a little bit of music in the background. So I'm going to start from the beginning, but look at the subtitles because there is some music and I don't want to get hit for that. So let me start it over. Here we go. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm going to show a few more videos before we close out. So thank you all again. So here is some other videos. I right, should be able to see me. And it pulls up on the screen here. So the first video, we're going to talk about tunnels. IDF, Rafa. So let's click on this link. It's not supposed to happen. It's supposed to send me to the link. There we go. אנחנו מאתרים ומוצאים מנהרות, מנהרות אברחה, ומנהרות שמאפשרות לירגון החמאס להביא אמצעים ויכולות שאלולים לפגוע בקוחותנו ובאזרחינו.
So here's another one. So this was after 20 days, Division 98 completed the operation in Jabala. The forces left the ship and are preparing for their next mission. So watch this. Only about 20 seconds. So here's one of Hamas dropping a bomb on the IDF. Let's look at this one. So it's an I it's a Hamas drone it's fixing to drop a bomb on IDF soldiers. Here's one of the IDF taken on Hamas. Minute 39 video.
So here is a quick video of some crazy talk by Biden in regards to what's going on with Israel, which I just thought I'd show this. They call it Biden's crazy talk. Hamas fails to fulfill its commitments under the deal. Israel can resume military operations. But Egypt and Qatar have assured me and they are continuing to work to ensure that Hamas doesn't do that. The United States will help ensure that Israel lives up to their obligations as well. That's what this deal says. That's what it says. And we'll do our part. This is truly a decisive moment. Here's a cool video. Of a brother and sister that meet while fighting in Raqqa. They reunite, which I thought was a cool video to show before we get ready to close out. And I just wanted to show that. Let's have it, let's have it, let's have it. I'm with him. <laughs> all right so our last video before i close out this one i want you to listen to this one real quick so the very last video so it's about a jewish mother she is no longer safe as a jew the public school in art in Ontario, Canada. So we just we'll, just listen to her story real quick, all right? Before we close out, I wanted to show this for a reason because I'm gonna start showing more of these videos as we get into our news and other stuff. But I just listen to her story before we close out. It's about a minute and eleven long. To Ontario, Canada. To Ontario, Canada. And today I had to pull her out of school because of anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. The other day she was told that Jews can't be trusted. And today there was a cultural event at her school and there was a Palestinian presentation which had a large map of the Middle East, which labeled Israel, not Israel, but Palestine and claimed that Jerusalem was the capital of Palestine. And the school allowed this. And when I asked them why they allowed this and how they could allow this, they claimed that it was perfectly acceptable and that I was the one in the wrong. I never in my life would have thought that I would have to pull my daughter out of public school because she's no longer welcome and she isn't safe as a Jew in a public school in Ontario, Canada. Um, we're actually a bit broken right now and a bit tired. And uh, we're kind of thinking about what to do next and where to go. But I can tell you right now that the rot in the public schools and the anti-Semitism in the public schools, it's not going anywhere. And it's here to stay. All right, so that's where we're going to close out. Stop the share. All right, guys. So hope you enjoyed these videos. Now keep the updates going. Right? as much as I can. Love you all so much. Thank you for following. Hope the video isn't too long. I try to make it as fast as I can. But I hope you all tune into the videos. Like, share, even subscribe. Right? I love you all so much. I'm out.